Hello everybody and welcome to History Bite number 76, dated October 11th, 2020. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Bite is entitled, We Need a Larger U.S. House of Representatives. The House of Representatives, unlike the U.S. Senate, was designed to be the People's House, the House of Congress that represented the popular passions of the day, the will of the people, and thus the House of Representatives has to be able to adequately represent the interests of the people. That is why they were given short two-year terms to keep them close to the people, so that these lawmakers would not forget about those who had put them on Capitol Hill. Makes perfect sense to me. However, with a nation of more than 330 million citizens, a 435-member House of Representatives cannot adequately and fairly represent the interests of anywhere near all of these citizens. For that reason, I am proposing a much larger House of Representatives. But before I get into that, let's go back in history and do some stats first. The current 435-member U.S. House of Representatives effectively came into existence with the Apportionment Act of 1911. That act was based upon the U.S. Census of 1910, which had reported an American population of 92 million people. Keep in mind, our current population is now more than 330 million. But the 1910 census reported us at 92 million people. Because of that census, Congress passed the Apportionment Act of 1911, which provided for a 433 member House of Representatives plus two more representatives for the presumed incoming states of Arizona and New Mexico, thus bringing the number to 435. After the 1920 census, Congress did not pass an Apportionment Act. It did, however, pass the Reapportionment Act of 1929, which effectively set the 435-member House of Representatives into permanency. The law mandated that, with each subsequent U.S. Census, those 435 representatives, that number rather, would be reapportioned among the states based on the states that had grown in population and the states that had lost population. So under no circumstance in theory was the number to exceed 435. With each census, those 435 would simply be reapportioned among the states. All right? Since that Apportionment Act was passed in 1929, the number has only grown above 435 once, excuse me, twice. With the addition of Alaska and Hawaii in 1959, the number briefly grew to 437. With the 1960 U.S. Census and the apportionment, once, the reapportionment, once again, the number was reduced to 435 which it remains to this very day. 435 members of the House of Representatives placed against a 330 million individual population of the United States means that each U.S. representative is supposed to represent approximately close to 760 to 770,000 people each. That's a lot of folks. And that, frankly, is absolutely impossible for one little U.S. representative to adequately and fairly represent the interests of some 765 to 770,000 people each. That's too many people for one person to represent. Needless to say, there are going to be hundreds of thousands of people who will never have their interests even glanced over, let alone taken into account. And that's just not right in our system. No American should be left out. No American should be left behind. So for that reason, I am proposing that the U.S. House of Representatives be increased 
from 435 members to 1,500 members. 1,500 members in the House of Representatives would effectively make a congressional district's total population no more than about 220,000 each. That is approximately the same number of individuals that each member of the House represented at, at the time of the U.S. Census of 1910. All right? So that's 110 years in the past. A formula that we're still going by to this very day. Okay? Because Congress refused to increase the size of the House. Something they could do today if they chose. Okay? Nevertheless, uh, by increasing the size of the House of Representatives to 1,500 members, allowing for each congressional district to have about 220 to uh, no more than about 225,000 people each, the interests of the people would be much more adequately and fairly represented. Yes, unfortunately, some people will still be left out, but with much smaller congressional districts, everyone in those districts stands a fighting chance in having their interests represented. And the individual members of the House of Representatives can much more easily attend to the needs of their districts. And hundreds of thousands of people will not be left out in the cold when it comes to representation. These smaller districts would be much fairer to the concept of equal representation and much more reflective of a representative government. Okay, something that a 435 member House of Representatives placed against a 330 million population in this country uh, cannot do. All right, 330 million people cannot be adequately represented with a 435 member House of Representatives. It's just not going to happen, no matter how you cut the cake. There will be hundreds of thousands of people in each of those districts not represented. So. I propose that the Congress, when it deems it necessary and proper, which I think it is more than necessary and proper right now, that the Congress increase the size of the House of Representatives to 400 to 1,500 members from its current 435 member state so that the interests of the American people can be more adequately and fairly represented in our national legislature. You may or may not agree with me. That's fine. Let's talk about it. If you think the house is good at the size it's at, cool. If you think it should be even bigger than 1,500 members, that's cool too. Again, let's discuss. I look forward to it. Thank you very much for listening to this. Any questions, controversies, whatnot, leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Take care. Stay safe out there. And I'll talk to you at the next one. Peace.